Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Okay, today I'm going to talk about why you are more at risk in the Philippines than you are at home. Because uh, several people have brought it up and still don't get why you're at a higher risk. Um, first thing is, you're in a third world country. Um, if you're not local, then you're rich. Regardless of how much money is in your pocket, there's just an assumption you are. As such, you're prone to have people try to rob you because they know you're um, a foreigner in a foreign land. Um, that gets me on a point too. Because you're standing out um, like a sore thumb, I, opportunists are more likely to go for you. You'll get your pickpockets, you'll get your um, people trying to sell you naff crap. Uh, but generally, I mean, even these, as you end, exit the airport, they try to hike the price with a taxi or whatever. Um, it's very common. So, right at the, as soon as you've hit the Philippines, you've already got people trying to extort extra money out of you. Now, this is at the top end, you know, this is the, the, the small stuff, but it all leads on from that. Um, because you're in holiday mode, you know, it's like, um, with taxis, when people are just, oh, I'll just pay it because I can't be bothered to argue with the taxi driver. I'm on a holiday. They know you're doing it. That's why you'll pay three, four times the amount or even more because you're in holiday mode. So they'll exploit that. In the same way, they'll, they'll do it at every opportunity. Um, now, the next one is quite an important one. People who do most of the crime in the Philippines related to foreigners may be known to them. This is something that's not really covered. Um, there's no statistics on any of this stuff. Um, otherwise, uh, I wouldn't even be making this video because you could actually go, well, the number of foreigners murdered in the Philippines was X, number in suicide, X, da da da. Well, let's face it, a lot of this stuff that ends up in the media isn't correct anyway. Um, the, if There's a very common um, thing in the Philippines called the love triangle. Um, it's an easy way for a, a crime to be mopped up. Uh, expat killed, it was the wife or the girlfriend's ex-boyfriend. Done and dusted, junk. May have nothing to do with it, but it's the quickest and easy way of do, uh, dealing with the crime. But that's a prime example of why they may actually be known to them. Because it could be your new partner's uh, ex-boyfriend or current boyfriend without your knowledge. Um, as such, they don't appreciate it. Or in the case of one expat, which I covered on a video before, um, his wife's boyfriend actually murdered him um, for financial gain. And that's not, he's not the first time, he's not the first expat that's happened to. How often does that happen in your home country? Um, unless you've got millions in the bank or got some, some something pretty extraordinary going on in your life it's not normal but it is in the Philippines it's very common um, the next ones are things like uh, a friend of mine where he fired the cleaner because uh, he caught she was stealing money um, so he got rid of her next thing is his whole house got robbed now the guard is the cousin of the cleaner so you got somebody with a key the cleaner had it you know because obviously she was trusted initially um, and then you've got the guard that gave access to the, the compound. Um, yet, nobody was disciplined, nobody was sacked for it. it he uh, fell asleep at the time, etc, etc. Prime example of why something could go horribly wrong and what, what, go, what uh, happens, very little. There's, like I said, there's no real documentation. You need to go through all the crimes and stuff yourself uh, and you'll see there's issues with them. The, you know, some of them just stink that there's something else going on. Um, next one, because I'll leave that one open. You can have a chat about that if you want to later. You're in an unfamiliar country, yet there's no assumption of risk. This ties in with holiday mode, because you assume everyone's going to look after you because you're a tourist. Um, but I know many people, including myself, has done this, 
will go into areas which um, would be bad areas of a town. Um, in your own country, you wouldn't do it. You know at night, there's certain areas you wouldn't want to wander around in or whatever. But in the Philippines, expats often do. Um, so why would you assume it would be better in the Philippines? Safer. Safer when they know you've got more in your wallet um, today than some of these people have got for three months. And you're an easy target. Guns, guns can be as low as a thousand pesos in the Philippines. Murders happen for less than 5,000. So walking into somebody else's territory, um, it's a bit like a, a lamb walking into a, a, a den of wolves. That's what I'm saying. Because when you, when you look in the Middle East, a lot of the stuff that happens to um, people in Iraq, for example, has been when they've decided to go out the uh, green zone, etc., into the other areas. It's a very similar thing. It's the assumption you're safe because you put your guard down. You don't look at it in the same way you do in areas that you would in your own country because when you're in your home country, you're aware of your situation. You're aware of your surroundings. You're aware of the types of people around you because you're familiar with it. In the Philippines, all that blurs away because you're not familiar with the country, the cultures, the people, the locations, etc. Um, next ones are a bit more severe, which is where people get killed. You assume the laws work. Um, the, the laws are a bizarre thing in the Philippines, and I'm not really going to talk about it for it gets too political. But just have a look at some of the stuff that goes on um, in political circles, but also look at political people and how it affects them in the law. I'll leave it at that. Uh, which gets me on the next one. Political power overrules most things in the Philippines. Um, if you look around for some of the things that some of the politicians get out, up to, you will see what I'm talking about. Um, I've talked about this before where, uh, for example, there was an expat at a hotel where he could hear a Pajero revving up the engine outside because the guy was having engine problems. Um, and then he went out there and gave him a mouthful for the guy that owns the car to pull a gun on him um, and he was going to kill him. The guy with the gun is somebody in uh, a political family. He would have killed him and got away with it. That's what I'm saying on it. They couldn't care less. You're nothing to them. Don't assume you're better than the elite class in the Philippines because they don't see you as anything. You're not important. You're in their country. And that's how they all see it. You are there. That's why you hear uh, quite common. If if you don't like it here, leave. And you'll see that in the newspapers. Even, they'll quote it when somebody, a foreigner, will say something. Don't like it, leave. Uh, they're quite, quite strong on that. Um, the next one is neighbors may not help you. Um, if... Even if they hear screams at night, you're banging on the door, they may not open it. There was, um, I remember a boarding house. There was an expat writing about this because he was at the same boarding house. I don't know why the guy is stopping at one of these um, shared accommodation places. But the place was getting robbed and the people just stayed in bed and pretended to be asleep. Because they were worried about being killed if they um, basically disturbed the robbery that was occurring in the Philippines you think why you know you could overpower them whatever there was a bank robbery I remember reading about where they killed everybody in the bank there were nine people got killed did they have to do it the answer is no they just did so be aware if you think all this happens on your own country be aware in the Philippines you are a small community, yet a lot of this crime happens to a high percentage. Nobody has the statistics on it, but I'll, the easiest way to put this is I must know indirectly or directly at least 40 major things that have happened to people, whether it's murder, robbed, house taken by, house and business taken by their wife, um, 
left for dead in the Philippines financially and you know basically they've been sick the wife took everything and basically just left them there to die um, that's a high percentage 40 people in the UK major crimes etc only had three three occurrences since 1989 um, and I know at least 10 times as many more people in the UK so be aware all these things occur a lot more often because you're in a smaller community but you're in a community in a foreign country you're in a community that um, often doesn't function as a group it's a pity it is so splintered the way it is um, if you get in bad trouble a lot of expats will not help you um, they love to a lot of them are very opinionated and oh you must have done it or whatever if you get uh, jailed for something you didn't do uh, there's very little support support there for you whatsoever um, they're more like to run you down crab mentality uh, financial support from other expats can be quite narrow as well well so you're pretty self-reliant now bear in mind I haven't talked about the the mill I haven't talked about MPA or or the other issues that can go on in the Philippines I just want to talk on the ones that are very basic and are the majority of problems that people face and why they happen a lot of it is because people feel safe um, and you'll hear me use the term a lot where I say Philippines is like a slap in an unexpected slap in the face because it is you can be going along quite happy in life and then get a slap for completely out, out the blue the Philippines is like that things can go fine and then something uh, pretty severe happens um, being in the wrong place at the wrong time very simple thing very easy to happen in the Philippines uh, especially around the election times where it can be quite dangerous in some locations uh, so just have a think about those because all, I, all I'm trying to do here is explain that there's a higher risk um, don't assume everyone's out there to be your best buddy or whatever because the expat community is there's a lot of rogues in there uh, to, to say the least but even hiring people be aware who's in your house because they know what's in your house they know where your safe is they know what you've got um, I know even from my Filipino friends they they've actually th stopped having people in their homes um, where they used to have living helpers they'd rob the rice they'd have relatives around emptying stuff out of the house knowing that the people are at work um, because conscience wise the people that do this stuff have none the reason being is a lot of it is inherited from generations their whole responsibility is their parents is their, their brothers and sisters etc you're not even seeing it as an issue because quite simply you're not even discussed you're not you don't appear you're not on that list of oh I better uh, have a conscience about this it's not even recognized they're doing anything wrong because you've got parents or whatever saying we need rice we need money we need this we need that um, and they'll do whatever it takes but not everybody but it, the whole point is is to think that way maybe what what if somebody's manipulating your cleaner what if somebody's manipulating the maid what what's going on in the background because thinking about it you reduce your risk and that's what you need to be doing all the time the more you reduce your risk the less likely something is to happen to you um, but like I said the percentages are a lot higher in the expat community um, it's you know I just I just find it bizarre that people can't seem to grasp it but then again I talk to long-term expats and we can sit and go through all this stuff with people and a week later they'll do exactly what we didn't say to do um, and then complain they lost everything and it wouldn't be the first time um, 
So if you don't want to listen to it, don't bother. But I will say these are the things that are likely to go wrong. These are the things to think about. Um, don't assume everything's fantastic all the time. Because if you pre-plan, things don't go wrong. Or if you at least pre-plan, you can make assumptions. And you can you know, prepare yourself for something going wrong. If you don't, uh, you can end up homeless, losing everything, and stuck in the Philippines, which has happened to several expats because there's an assumption that somebody will deport you. But people don't want to pay for your ticket either. All right, thanks for watching.